Hey guys, this is Zip and Chris for Cardrunners.com. I've got a live play video for you guys today. Uh, I'm going to get it up to 25 tables. Currently I've only got 14 up, so I'm just waiting for the rest to load. Ace-King suited here, obviously folding to the limp shove, and the random 3-bet. Uh, <coughs> Ace-King here. This guy's been pretty aggressive. I think I can get it in against the cutoff raise. I can just go back and check it out what he has here. I think he's gonna have weaker weaker aces enough times for me to get it in. He had kind of aggressive stats. There he's thirty three and eighteen over a uh, hundred hands. So that to me is the type of guy who can three bet me with ace ten, ace jack, ace queen. I'm going to limp along with 8s here. I'm going to be limping along with all my pairs, 9s and below. And I get small 3 bow with the king 9 off on the button. I'm going to fold. I'd call a min raise there. I uh, hit a set here. going to raise just over 3x. Pretty dry board. And uh, with 8s, 4 ways I'm just going to call. 3 ways I would fold. But 4 ways is my minimum to call there for 120 at T30 to set mine. So this is fine here. I'm just going to bet something like close to 400 and then just jam the river. I don't think there's a card that could come off on the maybe a 6 or 7. That might make me shut down, but uh, he should have probably a 9 here and he'll be happy to stack off. And I'm going to 3-bet with my jacks here against a cutoff raise. And definitely shoving the river. And I have a comfortable size to shove the river, so I'm happy with the, the sizes that I made it. And he calls me with a 9. So, I mean, pretty standard for your average uh, random villain there. And that hand is a good, that, uh, the hand with 5s there where I did hit the set is a good example of how you should be playing your good hands really fast. Because if I just flat called the flop and then bet small in the turn and river and didn't put all my chips in, I wouldn't have got close to the maximum value that I could have. I opened King 8 off here on the button. Um, HUD stats aren't up for those tables yet, but I think as a default, I'm happy with opening King 8 off there. It's near my near the bottom of my range. I'd be happy to open a little bit wider if I had their stats up and knew that they were playing pretty tightly. And folding Ace Jack to the 6x in early position. can't really see flat calling with too many hands uh, against a 6x raise from under the gun. Hands like jacks, tens, ace-king, ace-queen would be a little bit tricky to play. Uh, opening ace-king to 70 here in mid-position. And I'm going to complete with my king-queen. I think the big blind is probably going to shove a lot. Uh, so I'll see what happens after I complete. And... Only one decent reg behind me here, so I'm going to open them for us in early position. Uh, similar thing with the threes here. Not too many good regs behind, so I'm I'm okay with limping my pocket pairs in early position. If I'm at, I'm, if I'm at a table that has uh, a lot of good regs that I recognize, I'll just fold my small pairs in early position. And I'm also more likely to open up my range a little bit. I might open nines in early position. Uh, in that spot when there's a lot of good regs behind. So I've got 18 tables up right now. And you guys can see I don't have a mouse cursor clicking anywhere. It's because I'm using an Xbox controller. It's a, a helper program. That allows me to just make all my decisions with an Xbox. I sometimes use the mouse towards the end of my set, but this Xbox controller makes it pretty easy for me. Let's me do everything. Mm, probably could have stabbed out on that flop. That was just my fault for not paying attention. Uh, I'm not going to stab here with the queen on the turn.
just going to keep checking and hope I can get a free showdown. Six is here, I would call up to 80 chips. Uh, 180, I'm definitely folding. And I would almost consider 100 if there was more limpers, because if there's more limpers, there's a better chance of those guys calling the 100 chips. And I'm probably good with my force here. Most of the time. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I made a mistake by not stabbing on the flop, I think, once those two players checked me. I'm going to open ace-queen off and under the gun. A lot of people like to fold that there. Uh, king four suited, I'm going to complete. The guy's kind of loose and aggressive, so I'm not going to be raising. Uh, king four suited is often going to be a raise for me, blind versus blind. Uh, but I'm just completing with the intent to stab. King seven off is a little bit trashy. Hijack is a loose player, 83-67, so I'm just going to fold it. Uh, and I'm just going to stab here for 30 with the king four suited. Uh, probably good chance of being good here with my 9-5. Still going to check it. Uh, too many draws can call me. Uh, going to fold 9s to the min raise. Jay Weezy is a good solid reg. Uh, I'm just going to raise small with the aces here. Uh, Jay Weezy fots me. I'm going to double barrel here. I think Jay Weezy on the King King 3 flop can uh, obviously calling with aces and kings. Jay Weezy can float me there with uh, hand like sevens a lot. So I'm going to rep some solid strength here and, and barrel again. I think I'm repping a, a, a pretty strong hand by, by betting there. And my size is nice too. My size kind of reps value. Like I'm trying to get value from uh, from his weaker hands. So Kings just beat me with my aces. And Jay Weezy obviously has ace-king, threes, or jacks here. Uh, so... I mean, I'd need a huge hand. I'd probably even consider folding aces. I probably would fold aces in this spot. Because uh, Jay Weezy is a good solid rag. I have 3.7 thousand or 3.700 hands on him, and he's familiar with my game. He knows I'm not fooling around under the gun. I mean, in in his eyes, ace queen off is probably the worst hand I open raise there. And on top of having a tight open raising range. I think my double barreling range is obviously going to be pretty tight too. Uh, I'm going to bet close to pot here. Actually, I'm just going to pot it with queens against one guy. I completed jack-5 suited there. It's a bit of a loose complete, but I'm suited, and suited makes, makes flushes. So that's a pretty bad turn card for me. Uh, I'm just going to check it with the queens, and if he bets big, I'm just going to let go of it. Not much value in getting married to your hand there. I'm uh, going to complete queen jack off. I'm a little short, and the limper's a little bit short too, but queen jack off is pretty nice. Uh, now a pretty horrible river card, so a 6 and a 10 got there. Um, I could bet small, like 100, and get value from his one pair of hands, or I could check with the intent to fold. Uh, I don't think I'd ever check call there, unless he bet tiny. So I'm going to bet with 90 with my jack 5 here. I'm going to ISO Lee Horse to 80 with my 10s. And going to 3-bet my Queens to 450 here. I could just shove 2 with 375 in the pot. That actually might be a better play. Uh, now these guys are loose and bad enough that 450 is fine. And just checking here with my tens, I'm probably not going to put any more chips in the pot on the with an ace and a king out there. And folding jack six off to the min raises, completing king nine suited. It's going to be five ways. I'm going to open ace king to 250 here under the gun, and just checking down my tens. So a, a flop top pair, pretty good, but it's five ways, and I'm out of position, so I'm just going to check and see what happens. And now I have. 400 less than pot on a draw on a pretty wet board, so I'm just going to jam it. And just folding the 10s. I m could almost argue for a call there, but uh, Queen Jack suited, I would often raise here, but the big blind's a little bit loose, and my stack is pretty short. 
Um, Bradley's a pretty nitty guy, so I'm just going to fold the king nine. If I did decide to call there, I'm probably going to be facing turn and river bets against a guy who probably doesn't have uh, a hand worse than king nine in his range in that spot. And here with the small blind being so short, I can just jam 1,400 chips. 1,400 chips, even if they had me covered, I think would be fine to stick it in. With uh, king queen off there. I think a lot of guys miss on value <coughs> from shoving, say, 12, 13 big blinds at 5,100, blind versus blind, and on the button. Especially against tight players. I mean, I assume most of you out there watching this don't make too many loose calls. Oh, he was sitting out. I'm still going to raise anyways. Don't make too many loose calls with 1,300 chips at 5,100 uh, against button shoves. I mean, if you play around with it and sit and go wizard, you'll see that most players are going to have really tight calling ranges, which allow you to to shove quite wide. I'm going to stab here for 30. If he has a jack or a 10, he's calling me, but I can fold out all of his 9 high or worse hands with a, with a bet. And sticking my last 105 in with a 6 off. So I've got 24 tables up. And I think I'll just leave it at that. It's really tempting to shove here. Uh, the guy's got... Yeah, I'm just going to stick it in. It's an overshove for almost 16 big blinds, but he's got a 40% uh, limping range. And he's got a lot of chips, which tell me that he's quite loose and bad, and he's limping a lot of worse hands. So I get him to fold a lot, and not only that, but ace-8, I get him to actually call off with worth, worse hands still. Ace-8 off, I think, is just a fold here. Ace-10 off, ace-9 suited, I think, is my shoving range. Uh, here's a good example of a spot that I can shove for a lot of chips on the button. Small blind's loose, and big blind's pretty tight, and the big blind's the important one in that spot. So I know Jay Weezy isn't going to call me too wide. Saying that, I think he's going to recognize the fact that I don't have a monster, because I did shove. So we're on the decline now. I'm down to 23 tables, and it'll just keep getting smaller. Here with sevens, just have a quick glance at the players behind. A lot of them are just kind of randoms. If there were more reggie guys, then I'd be more likely to raise, but in that spot, in that position, sevens are just a weak hand. And definitely shoving ace-queen on the button min-raise. I don't really care who's min-raising on the button. And he did it <coughs> to sort of trick me there, which is fine. I can kind of keep a mental note of that. When I have 23 tables up, I have to take mental notes more than I can take physical notes. So I'll, I will keep track of, of the times that I do shove over him uh, against his min raises if he ever folds or if he only min raises solid hands. Here I'm just going to bet 300 and jam it in on a non-club turn. And she's on toast. Fairly aggro. Good, I think like good standard aggro. Like I, I like those stats. I think they're good numbers. So I would call him. I'd assume he's shoving a, a similar range that I would shove in that spot. So obviously queen eight's not good enough. He's got to be shoving pretty wide for that. Here's a nice dry board for me to to see bet. See bet one twenty, and insta jam the turn there. And he's got ace nine. So good for me there. 